in this video, we're going to be talking about heroes, not just the game, but the actual heroes that make up our lives. We're going to be talking to Pastor Gary Blanchard, the World Youth Director for the Seventh-day Adventist Church, about his heroes and the Bible heroes, and you cannot miss it. Gary, you used to travel the world to lead youth ministries. Now you do it right here from Zoom and StreamYard and other places. Uh, what is it like to lead millions of young people who are all trying to follow Jesus? You know what, Sam? It's probably the most thrilling thing that I've done in my life. And I've had many opportunities for many years to be a youth pastor and to be a, a district pastor but now getting the chance to see our young people and their fervency for God around the world. It's exciting, man. I, I won't lie. It's exciting. A long time ago, there was a lot of conversation about identity and our Christian identity and identity in Jesus and so on. And uh, Steve Jobs said once that reinstilling identity is very easy. You just mm -hmm. need to remind people of who their heroes are. Mm -hmm. And that's part of why this game has come out, you know, in, in, in terms of trying to remind people of how strong and courageous and, and fantastic these Bible heroes were. Also how flawed and how terrible they were at times, but they kept focusing on God and, and, and that made all the difference. How do you, do you have any heroes in the Bible that you associate with or that you admire more than others? You know, there's a lot of them in the Bible, but I would say if I was thinking of one right now, besides Jesus, I would say Daniel. The prophet Daniel. My goodness, what an incredible story of a young man who was in a secular university but shone brightly for Jesus and was even willing to share the good news, the gospel, with the great King Nebuchadnezzar. A phenomenal story about a young man who had integrity in a very uh, in, a, in an, an environment that did not have integrity, but he stood for God. Really strong, exciting story. Yeah. What What do you think that made him, and not just him, but what is it that makes a hero? Mm -hmm. Do you think? Well, you know, what I think is a person who is willing to live for God, though the heavens fall upon them. What I mean is they're willing to stand true for the Lord, even when things are turning against them all around. And that's one of the things we see with Daniel. We see it with his free, three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These guys were willing to stand up for God, not when it was popular, but especially when it wasn't. And it was because of this that be they became heroes, not only to us reading the Bible, but definitely to those people living in those times who watched them. I mean, they were inspirational. They were even able to turn the heart of a wicked king back to God. Unbelievable, Sam. They managed to to live in a very polarized society. You're either with the king or, or you were a rebel. But they mm -hmm. managed to stand up without arrogance. Yeah. Uh, our God can save us. But even if he doesn't, we will not bow down, King. This is where we draw the line. And I, I think we need a, a generation, Gary, that that is willing to draw the line, right? That to say, I, I'm from this point onwards, I will go no further. And mm -hmm. this may bring persecution. This may bring uh, um, cancellation in this cancel society. This may bring all sorts of things that are that are negative. Is it still worth pursuing what Jesus has has taught us and to stand up for Jesus? even if the circumstances are not favorable. You know what I love about the Lord, Sam, is that his laws and his word is not arbitrary. In other words, he doesn't just come up with a bunch of laws and rules for your life because he can and he's God. No, usually those laws are always those laws and those guidelines that he gives us are for our good. So when we walk in God's ways, we actually find more fulfillment, more joy in this life. So God is wonderful. His laws are not made to chain us down, imprison us. They're actually made to set us free. Um, one of my favorite quotes I heard some time ago, I hope I can say this right, it says something like this, all disciples are believers, but not all believers are disciples. And I believe that probably defines Christianity today. It's true that every single disciple of Jesus believes that Jesus is their savior. And that's really important. But there are many people in the world today who are believers in Jesus, but they're not really his disciples. They're not following him. They're not living for him. And that's why there's so much sadness and pain and suffering, even within the church today. But Sam, if we would not only be believers in the Lord Jesus, but followers of Christ, that's when we would find a, a lot of joy, like I believe Daniel did.
you're wearing this scarf here. Explain yeah. to us exactly what it is for those that are not Pathfinders. They're not Seventh-day Adventists, and they're watching you with this scarf. I go, this guy is weird. He must be from Texas. <laughs> that is true, but that's not where the scarf comes from. So tell me about that. Yeah, you know, you probably think I'm a Boy Scout. That, that's uh, what we call it here in the United States. No, this is a Pathfinder uh, uh, sash. And Pathfinders uh, is a wonderful uh, ministry in the Seventh-day Adventist Church that is actually training for discipleship from when a young person is very small all the way until they're a grown adult. It's a training to help people become disciples of Jesus. We call it Pathfinders. This is actually the, the highest level in Pathfinders is Master Guide. So here you're seeing my cool Master Guide sash. But uh, <laughs> Of all the ministries that we have in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, I would say that probably uh, Adventurers, Pathfinders, and Master Guides is our most comprehensive curriculum for becoming a disciple or training for becoming a disciple of Jesus. It's a great ministry. Young people get out and they learn how to do all kinds of fun stuff that you that young people do in nature and getting outside. And it also has a chance to learn how to be more effective in ministry, but it grows young people into disciples of Jesus. Pathfinders was tremendous for me in becoming a leader. Absolutely. Yeah. I was a, a, a captain of my unit from age 11. And I, I was the youngest in the unit. So this was a, a really interesting thing for me to observe even back then. Um, I think I think Pathfinders is what taught me gamification, Gary. You know, okay. we're talking about a game that has come out and, and you've got this on your mobile that you can, you know, uh, uh, enjoy. It's a, it's a, it's a Bible game. But the original gamification came from Pathfinders because that's what happens. You know, you do this and then you do that and then you get a badge and you can put it on your on your uniform. Yep. And then, you know, if you have a collection of badges, you level up, you go from friend to companion, you know, all the way. And then on top of that, you go from adventurer when you're very young, then Pathfinder, then, then Master Guide eventually. So the whole thing, there is a, a progression of... A progression of of your of your leveling up, a progression that is gamified. I think is the original mm. uh, gamification system, and we've had it for <laughs> over a hundred years. So there's nothing new with gamification. No. We've always had it, and Pathfinders have shown it. How many Pathfinders do we have around the world? You know, we have an estimated about five million Pathfinders and adventurers around the world. Pretty amazing. Lots amazing. and lots of young people, and I love how you said it because it's within having fun that young people can grow. It's within getting out in nature that young people can grow in the Lord. And that's what Pathfinders is all about, creating an atmosphere for young people to grow spiritually and grow as people. It's also a great opportunity, Sam, uh, for, for adults to get involved in the lives of young people, to mentor them and encourage them. Young people need the older generation. You know, we kind of live in the world of ageism, you know, where we try to separate the older from the younger. That's just crazy, Sam. We need each other. The older generation needs to reach out to the younger generation. It reminds me of Malachi 4, where it says that in the last days, there will come Elijah the prophet who will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And notice what the Bible verse says. It says, and then the hearts of the children to the fathers. Notice when, when the older generation reaches out to the younger generation, like they do in Pathfinders, the younger generation responds by reaching back to the older generation. So it's, <laughs> Pathfinders is awesome, man. Look, I, I think that we need every opportunity for older generations to become the heroes of new generations. We don't like being, being heroes or being called heroes. I get it. Our hero is Jesus. He is, he is right here. That, that's Amen. the boss right there. So Amen. Jesus is the hero, sure. But I know some heroes in my life that I admired and that I still admire and I look up to them and I see how they emulate Jesus. And I want to follow them, their living example. The Apostle Paul says this. He says, um, you know, copy me as I'm copying Christ. Follow me as I'm following Christ. You know, look at me. Look at how I'm doing this. This is what is this is what God expects from you. Emulating that perfectly. Now, obviously, it's not going to be perfect. We're never going to reach a point here that we that we're going to emulate Jesus perfectly. We're going to be trying to do this for eternity. But best we can, we need to be seen by younger generations so that they can look up and say, I want to be like her. I mm. want to be like him. And in local churches, one possibility, and we've seen this before, is to, to go around any project. It could be Pathfinders. It could be Heroes the Game. It could be, it could be any, any project. 
but you share stories of mm. of how when you when you were in this situation many years ago and i know that sometimes we we think children are tired of hearing in my day this is what it used to be like <laughs> it it really it, it's so important and even if young people may reject it we need to keep saying it because they are lost we you know I started, I think I started theology when I was 17 years old. And when I look back to that young Sam, what did I know? Mm. Nothing. Mm. I needed people to, 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 to help me. I needed heroes then. And I only could discover those heroes by, by listening to them, by listening to their story. Um, how do you suggest we do this from a local church perspective? How can we, you know, cross these generations in a way that they can interact more and not be totally siloed. Yeah, you know, I think it's totally unnatural for a young person to not want to listen to the older generation. I believe this mentality of not listening to the older generation has taught them through the media and through Hollywood to disrespect the older generation. So it's, it's, it's not a natural thing. I think it's natural for young people to listen to the older generation, to care, to want to learn from them. And so what needs to happen in our church is we need to stop talking badly about the older generation. And we hear things like, you know, the youth need to lead the church. Oh, come on now. What does that mean for the older generation? Really, what, we're, what we need to be saying is we together need to lead the church and need to move forward. So I, I hear a lot of pastors say things like, you know what, uh, the youth are the church of today. Okay, that sounds really good. And probably most of the older generation would clap as well. But if you stop and think about it, what are they really saying? <laughs> We're not. That, We're gone. Yeah, We're past yeah, our the, sell by date. So then you have this generation of young people who are, are kind of uh, upset with the older generation for leading, for, for being in position and, and for um, directing the church because they've been taught that that's not the right thing to do. We're supposed to be leading, but that's not at all biblical. You know, uh, even the heroes in the Bible that we're talking about had older generation that they leaned on and learned from. They got on the shoulders of giants, shoulders of those who came before them. They didn't res disrespect the shoulders they were on. And to me, I think that's what needs to be brought back into the local churches. Now, don't misunderstand me. There are some adults that really keep the younger generation down. They don't want them to be involved. And so they kind of push them out of sight, you know, out of mind kind of a thing. But that's not what we're talking about here. There are many, many God-fearing leaders, especially in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, who want young people to be involved. And so we need to be encouraging that. And like Elijah uh, mentored Elisha, our leaders listening right now, your responsibility is to mentor and care for the younger generation so that they can grow to become even better leaders than you are. One of the effects in the game is the Elijah effect that gives you double XP, Ooh. is double experience <laughs> awesome. points yeah, for those yeah. questions. Um, Gary, next time we're going to find out what your best time in Heroes is, and we're going to play together. Uh, but for now, we just wanted to have a chat about heroes and and the heroes of the Bible and so on. Pastor Gary Blanchard, World Youth Director for the Seventh-day Adventist Church, thank you so much for joining us and for sharing your thoughts about heroes. And we'll see you next time. Always good to be with you, Sam. Bye-bye, everybody.